Um, so today we are going to talk about carers um, as part of Brain Injury Awareness Week this week. Um, and again, thanks to Cassie and the team. Um, today really is about the unique perspective that carers have um, when it comes to the caring role and in particular for someone who is um, the subject of a, a brain injury. So um, many of you may have heard of Carers SA before. I will talk a, a little bit about us. Um, uh, we've been around for 35 years. Um, really our entire reason for operating is to support the unpaid carer. So the family, the friend, the neighbour of somebody who um, requires care. Um, and that may be in any number of different forms, and we will talk about that um, as the presentation goes on. Uh, before I do go too far, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on, um, certainly from where I'm coming from, we're on the lands of the Ghana people. It may be that you are uh, beaming in from another uh, traditional land, uh, from another um, group of people, but uh, for us here in Seaton, where I'm based, um, we are on the lands of the Ghana people and we acknowledge uh, and we certainly uh, understand the impact of history uh, and the cultural strength, diversity and continual connection to the lands and waters um, of those traditional custodians. So I'm going to start with this slide, which um, many of you may recognise as a wedding photograph, which indeed it is. So um, that is me with my wife um, back on the 14th of December of 2014 so that's almost going back 10 years um, to the day or it will be in a few months time uh, which will mark uh, obviously my 10 year wedding anniversary um, now the reason I, I share this picture with you and we were overseas at the time um, when we were married is because my story is um, one that is very close to perhaps uh, some of you who are uh, on this on this um, call at the moment, and that really is to do with what happened just a matter of um, three weeks after we were married, or s shortly thereafter. Unfortunately, we never got to complete our honeymoon because on the 6th of January 2015, um, so some 23 days after we were married, uh, we were involved in this accident. Um, so the, um, I guess the itinerary that we had was to uh, leave Borneo uh, where we were married and head to the Maldives and then up through India and finish at the top of the world in Nepal. Um, but we never got that far. We actually were hit by that bus you can see there um, about 100 kilometres from the border. Um, you can see a bit of forest uh, behind those vehicles, so it was quite a remote part of the country. Um, there wasn't any medical assistance within um, uh, hundreds of kilometres of where we were. So uh, it just illustrates um, from a personal perspective how life can change very quickly for carers. Um, and there's really not a lot of notice that people get about how they need to adapt to a, a whole new set of life circumstances. Um, I guess what's relevant to Brain Injury Week uh, or Awareness Week and, and this story is that my wife sustained uh, an extremely severe traumatic brain injury in that accident. Um, she was, uh, um, she also suffered a number of other orthopedic injuries, um, but it's really the diffuse axonal injury um, that she sustained that was the most significant. Um, it was a closed head injury, so her, her skull wasn't fractured, but her brain uh, was um, unfortunately moved around inside the skull and a lot of damage was done to a lot of the connective tissue. So um, from that day uh, until this day, I've been her unpaid carer. Um, and of course, her husband. Um, and what we know um, from Carers SA and the work that we do is that often 
when life-changing events occur like this, uh, and particularly brain injury, it can have an impact on relationships um, where the person impacted um, is often changed in a way that um, um, they are not recognisable anymore to the person that they were were previously. So um, I'm very fortunate in the sense that uh, my wife, Terry, is um, an incredibly resilient person um, and um, I can still see the person that was there prior to the accident, but there's no doubt that that person has in fact changed from who they were prior. So, and I think for carers, um, that journey of, of change um, and uh, having to put those pieces back together and, and create a new life um, uh, really is uh, an enormous challenge. And, and it's a challenge that Carers SA um, take on with um, the millions of carers that uh, that we have in this country and the hundreds of thousands that reside here in South Australia. But thank you for uh, allowing me to share a little bit about my story. So um, it's obviously something that's very close to my heart. So who is a carer? It sounds like an a really simple question, but it's actually a very complex one. Uh, what we find at Carers SA is people don't recognise themselves as carers. They see themselves as the, the brother, the mum, the, the husband. They might be the child. They might be a neighbour. They might be just helping out. The word carer doesn't always resonate, and I think that's one of our bigger challenges. Um, I think, secondly, people don't see themselves as being worthy of the help that the person that they care for receives. And I think what we have to do is change that narrative so that carers see themselves as just as important as those they care for. We'll talk about who carers SA are. We'll certainly talk about the supports that we can offer to carers, uh, which is really critical, and how people can access that help. So when we talk about who a carer is, um, it's a really, really broad question because caring occurs in so many different ways um, and at so many different levels. Uh, but when we think about how we categorise that um, that question, this is what we do. We, we look at this list and we say, well, these are the major ways in which people care. Caring for someone with a disability, which is something that obviously I do now, um, is very common and we do see people um, with brain injury who are being cared for, um, where we can support with the services that we provide. Uh, often there's NDIS involved as well, which is something that we can also assist uh, with, which I'll talk to later. Uh, mental illness is something that's very um, common. Uh, we know that it can be very difficult for the people that care for someone with a mental health condition because it can be episodic. Uh, it can be complex. Um, sometimes it's difficult to diagnose. Uh, we're seeing a lot more carers caring for someone with dementia. So we do a lot of work with Skylight in the mental health space and Dementia Australia when it comes to dementia and understanding those conditions and how we can support carers. Long-term health conditions. So we're talking about people who are going to have uh, a condition that's likely to to last a long time uh, in many cases life uh, lifelong um, so uh, we're actually working closely with uh, mndsa uh, motor neurone disease um, we're also working closely with cancer council south australia uh, we're not talking about supporting people who might have uh, a broken bone uh, or something that's going to resolve in the short term so these are things where people are going to be caring for some time. The average length of a caring role on, on the current numbers is a, around 10 years. So um, so uh, I guess my role is is somewhere around the, uh, the average at the moment. Uh, but often those roles do last longer. Um, we know that the population is living longer. We also know that people are living longer with chronic health conditions. So we know that carers will indeed have to care for longer. Um, life limiting conditions. Um, so we're working with Palliative Care SA around how we can support people um, when they care for someone at the end of life, which obviously is a, a significant challenge. 
alcohol or drug related um, dependence. So that can be difficult for carers too. Um, and we work closely with family drug support uh, around the impacts that that can have on the people around that person. Um, and someone who's frail due to age. So a lot of people identify with that caring role when it comes to aging parents or, or aging grandparents. So important that um, for carers, uh, they are supported in that role. But this is not an ex exhaustive list by any means, um, but it gives us some frame of reference to talk about who carers are. So the role of the carer can be uh, multifaceted um, and I'll talk to the types of things that we see a lot of. Um, one of the biggest impacts is the emotional support uh, and what we talk about is the fact that you're always giving out, um, you're always having to be the one that's that's uh, acting on behalf of the person or listening or um, uh, being able to take on a lot of the um, the feelings that the person who you're caring for may have uh, and that can be really impactful for the carer so um, someone said to me once well you can't pour from an empty cup and I think um, we have to be giving back to ourselves as carers too and being able to fill our own cup so that we can give to others so sometimes we overlook the emotional impact that the caring role can have um, a more fundamental aspect of the caring role might be just ensuring that the groceries get uh, get bought and there's food on the table. Um, something that a lot of people might take for granted. Um, a carer has to ensure that they're not only looking after their own needs when it comes to shopping, but um, those that they care for. Looking after siblings, so we're talking about young carers in a lot of cases who are actually caring for a brother or a sister who may have a, a disability or may have a health condition. Um, I'll talk to the numbers in a moment, but there is um, a really large number of young carers in this country um, that often get forgotten about because they're not uh, thought of as being carers in a household and yet they're often undertaking caring roles and missing out on a lot themselves. It could be something as simple as driving to medical appointments or accompanying somebody on a public transport or maybe an access cab. Um, carers are going to be involved in the in the health system somewhere um, because that's unfortunately going to be part and parcel of the caring role in the majority of cases. Helping to communicate is a really important one because the per the person you care for may have lost the ability to speak or to comprehend what's being said. Um, so your ability to advocate on their behalf as as the, the carer uh, and be able to actually um, support that person and um, ensure that they understand what it is that's being said or that they understand what's happening to them. Um, it's a it's a critical part of what the carer does. It could be it could be personal care. So when things change quite suddenly, um, and in the case of, of of brain injury, and we know that it can be very um, uh, it can be diverse in terms of the impacts of of brain injury, um, but in some cases it may be that that person can no longer take care of all of their personal needs, and it may be that they need someone to do that for them, and that's quite an adjustment as well. Uh, preparing meals, so um, again, uh, it may be a different type of meal if that person can no longer eat certain foods or it might be that they have to be fed in a different way. Um, the whole area of, of food intake can be different to what it was prior to the caring role. Critically, um, and unfortunately, when it comes to carers and, and supporting the person they care for. There's often uh, medicines involved and, and the need to administer different types of medicine at different times of the day, different dosages, uh, and that can change over time. Uh, and it can be very, very stressful in terms of getting that right, ensuring you've you've got that person there, their medication at the right time, 
in in the right dose and that you're not putting that person at risk so um uh, we know that um, certain medications can impact on others and um, it, it really becomes a, um, a essential part of the caring role in many cases. Or it might be something just as simple as cleaning the house. Um, but for carers, when you're tired or you're stressed or you don't have much time for yourself, um, it's the last thing that you feel like doing. So we know that anyone, any time can become a carer. My story is an example, that, but there are many, many others. Uh, it might be a diagnosis that someone's not expecting. Um, it might be an accident. It could be the birth of a child with a disability. Um, it could, in fact, be an acquired brain injury, as we, as we know. So on the numbers, we know that almost 2.65 million Australians are carers, so about one in nine of us. Um, we expect this data to be updated shortly and we, we anticipate that that figure will hit the 3 million mark. So this is not a rare thing, um, but we never talk about carers and yet they are so fundamental to how our society operates. We talk about um, the population as a whole, so that's nearly 11%. Over 235,000 are actually young people, so 5 to 25. Um, it's a big number, um, and we can't forget about those young people. What we also need to realise is that if all of the hours of unpaid care were taken out of the system and paid for by government, um, then the figure that they'd have to fund would be somewhere close to $78 billion annually, and we expect that to increase when those new numbers come through. So um, it's not just a moral or a, an ethical imperative, it's actually a an economic imperative for government to support carers um, and for carers themselves to take up that support. In South Australia, we can see that the figure is just shy of a quarter of a million unpaid carers. Um, it's actually a higher percentage than the, the national figure. And that is to do with the fact that uh, we have an ageing population here in SA. Um, that includes 30,000 young carers who are 5 to 25. So it's a, again, it's a big number. So we do have a specialised young carer team. We do work in schools. We educate the educators to see that young people may not just be falling asleep because they've been up on their devices all night. They might have been helping their brother get to bed at night, helping them make the lunches for the next day, maybe helping with dinner. Um, could have been doing any number of things. What they're usually not doing is um, the things that they would prefer to be doing, which is maybe playing a sport or meeting up with their friends or, or going on that camp. So that's the sort of things that we try and uh, facilitate here at Carers SA. So who are we? So we've been around 35 years now, um, but in April of 2020, the Carer Gateway came in and that was really a game changer. Um, because for the first time, the government supported through the Commonwealth a national scheme for supporting carers. So Carers SA were the only successful tenderer here in SA. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Carer Gateway. So a national approach um, and importantly, a free service for carers um, and they can access support in a way that suits them, whether that's um, through online, in person or via the phone and no matter where they happen to live in the country. So if we have a look at the services, um, everything starts with a conversation. So the carer support planning team are the first point of call for when carers come to us. So either through a 1800 free call number, through the website, through a QR code or through a referral through another agency. Um, through understanding the carer's needs, we undertake what's called a carer star, um, and that helps us to develop an action plan. The carer star is seven points uh, on the star, so seven domains in a person's life. Only one of those is the caring role. The others really relate to, do you have time for yourself? What's your health like? Um, 
tell me about your financial situation. How are you coping? Uh, what other things are happening for you? Once we do that, we can start to put an action plan in place. Uh, a lot of the time, carers don't have anyone they can speak to uh, about how they're really feeling. Uh, when people ask, how are you? They say, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> Just worry about this person. What we want to do is allow a safe space for people to say, maybe I'm not fine and maybe that's okay. Uh, maybe we can help you work through some strategies. So we have our own counselling team. Uh, we also use other counselling services. So people are eligible for six sessions uh, for every uh, year that they're with us. Uh, but more sessions can be opened up if people um, do have a need. Coaching is about decisions or having um, having goals about what you need to do as part of your caring role. So that could be how do I find out about the NDIS or how do I navigate my age care? How do I find out more about what this brain injury that my person has acquired actually means and what my life will look like now? Uh, or maybe it's all those end of life decisions for someone caring for someone who's palliative. Peer support's about bringing people together and actually having a, um, a supportive space in which to actually build new relationships. We find that carers often feel very isolated. Um, they don't feel that their, some of their relationships might have fallen apart. Um, actually getting to see that you're not the only one and there are people you can learn from and get support from. So we deliver these peer groups right throughout the state on a regular basis. Um, there are also small support packages that are tailored to the person. So it might be around just having that that break from the caring role um, that allows you to recharge or it might be paying for something that um, is critical to the caring role that you can't afford or maybe getting some help around the home. And if you're in crisis as a carer and you come to us and a lot of people leave it until there is a crisis, which we we try to um, discourage people leaving it too long. Um, but unfortunately, we do see people coming to us at the point that they're burnt out or they've got a, a critical need of their own. We can provide emergency respite um, to, um, to get that happening as quickly as possible. More information is available through caregateway.gov.au. So I encourage you to have a look at that when you have the opportunity. Um, it's really important that we share this information and we, we reach more people. On the numbers at the moment, um, we're reaching around 8% of the known carer population in South Australia. So we know there's a lot more work to do. So if you are a carer and this has resonated with you, I'd encourage you to reach out to us and see what we can do to support you. Um, if you know someone who is, I'd encourage you to, to talk to them about the, the help that's actually out there for them. Um, this is how you can connect with us, our website. Um, the red button there is the, the process of at least reaching out to us and then someone gives you a call and starts that process off. Um, or you can, in fact, email us or, um, or head to the 1800 number. I'll stop sharing now and allow for some questions if we've still got a couple of minutes left. Um, so uh, hopefully that's been of some uh, interest and, and use to people, um, particularly if you weren't aware that there is that support. Uh, we can't always take the caring role away, but um, a lot of carers think they have to do it on their own when that's not the case. So happy to, happy to take any questions if people have any um, before we finish up. No questions at the moment, Cassie. Was there anything there in the chat? That... There's nothing in the chat, but I just saw Jade has unmuted. Um, did you have some questions, Jade? Oh, hi. Um, I did have one question um i yes. my, my dad has a brain injury um yes. so my mom is his primary carer he, he's 
very good, but he is different, as you were explaining at the start. Yes, um, yes. I know that she is very reluctant um, to ever to get any help um, herself. Do you come across that often? Is that something that pops up a lot um, with mm. this um, this company? <laughs> uh, it does, yeah. And it's it's one of the biggest hurdles we have, you know, other than understanding that people are in fact carers, uh, because we all play multiple roles. You know, we're never just one thing. We could be a a mother, a sister, a friend, a, an employee, uh, we're, we're all playing different roles and one of those roles might be carer. So firstly, her understanding that she's a carer is uh, the first thing. And then the second thing is um, understanding if we think about, you know, when people go on the air, air, airplane and they talk about the safety briefing and the oxygen falling from the compartment above your head, put your own on first. Um, you know, we, we kind of accept those things in other settings, but when it comes to carers, we think, um, you know, we're indestructible and we can just keep going forever. And, and what we see at Carers SA is that we see people burning out and um, not being able to sustain the role, particularly if it's going to be on a long-term basis, which often it is with brain injury. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, it, it is very common, Jade. Um, I'd encourage you to... Um, I guess, see if if she would be willing to at least explore if there was something here that might be able to help, Um, even if it was just as a bit of a a backup, you know, if if she ever needed it. It's not about forcing people into using services. It's actually about saying, well, if I ever feel like I need it, at least I know I've got it there. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I will um, have a look and see what I can do. It's very stubborn, but uh, <laughs> it would be great. It'd be great to have a little bit of extra support there. Um, just to know that it's there yeah. is wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome indeed. Yeah, thank you for the question, Diane. Did you have any comments you wanted to make or any questions? I'm happy to um, answer anything if I can. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Cassie. Um, no, I haven't got any questions, but it was really, I, I loved the presentation. It was very good. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Thanks so much. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, um, appreciate your time today. And uh, I realise everybody um, is busy and has other things that they need to do. So again, thanks to Cassie and the team at, at Brain Injury SA. Um, and this uh, recording will be available um in the, in the near future so um if uh, people want to uh, revisit it at any stage thank thank you cassie for having me today thanks so much steve that was really really invaluable thank you thank you thank you very right. much for your time i hope oh very welcome and um please uh if you have any other questions or you think of anything else um i'm sure uh, cassie will be able to point you in the right direction or You can look us up online. Thanks, everyone, um, and have a great rest of the day. Bye for now.